Global Banking and Finance Review Awards reflect the innovation, achievement, strategy, progressive and inspirational changes taking place within the global financial community. The awards were created to recognize companies of all sizes, prominent in particular areas of expertise and excellence within the global financial community. Today, we're glad to offer Allianz Trade, based in Hong Kong, an award for Best Trade Credit Insurance Company, the Asia-Pacific Region, 2022. Based in the vibrant city of Hong Kong and formerly named Eula Hermes, the company is now proudly rebranded Allianz. With more than 125 years of expertise, Allianz Global Business Intelligence is unrivaled. Allianz Trade offers technology-driven processes across the Asia-Pacific region which are used to generate insights and present actionable information to businesses of all sizes and in all sectors. We talked to Matthew Wells, Regional Commercial Director in the Asia-Pacific region, about business recovery after the global pandemic. Well, hello, Matthew, and thank you for joining us from your office in Singapore today. And first of all, I'd like to offer you congratulations. Allianz, once again, has been awarded the best trade credit insurance company in the Asia-Pacific area, and that is actually for the sixth successive time. So well done to you. Thanks very much, Phil. And we, as uh, the new, newly named Allianz Trade, are honoured to receive the award this year again. It's a privilege for us. Well, let's take a closer look now at the work of Allianz, if we may. I know that you actually commission regular reports on a yearly basis and the latest one has been taking a closer look at the global insolvency situation. What have you been able to find out from those reports? Of course, yeah, the report's a good one actually because it covers both uh, the macroeconomic environment, um, political risks and the financial situation that we see around the world. Um, and there's probably two, two clear messages. What we're seeing is that the, the support many countries received during the pandemic, uh, though that government support is uh, rescinding. Um, and we're seeing uh, definitely an increase in overdues and insolvencies uh, at a global level. Uh, a couple of things are driving this. We're seeing both the impact of, of the, um, the Ukraine situation um, is driving it and, and global supply chains. But in terms of numbers, we're seeing um, global insolvencies up 10% this year, and we expect that to rise to about 14% uh, in 2023. What would you say the factors are that uh, actually drives global insolvencies in an upward trend? Yeah, the current triggers, we're seeing um, lots of uh, significant supply chain pressures, which is driving uh, raw, material, raw material prices. So commodity sector, energy, uh, labour are all under significant pressure. Uh, we've probably all seen the, 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 the visuals of the busiest port in the world in Shanghai with the, the ships... Um, uh, pretty much stuck uh, out at sea. And this has a knock-on effect for the availability of product um, and the pricing of raw materials. So input costs are very high. We're also seeing inflationary pressure uh, across the world, which is uh, is putting pressure on uh, the level of financing and the cost of financing. And all of these factors are contributing to, to much choppier waters. I actually saw a quote this morning from uh, Jamie Demon, the global CEO of JP Morgan, who has said, I think the quote was, brace yourself for an economic hurricane. We're not quite seeing the hurricane, but we're definitely seeing some headwinds. Well, taking that a stage further, what will you say are the biggest challenges right now in the credit markets? And which countries do you think are actually in the best position moving forward, following on from the pandemic and other crises? Yeah, Asia has, um, is, is an interesting one. We've, um, we definitely are seeing and experiencing uh, an increase in, uh, in payment delays from our customers. And that's an early indication that insolvencies are coming. Um, so we're predicting uh, 9% uh, increase in insolvencies this year and rising to 17% next year. This is from a relatively low base during the, uh, the crisis. Um, and it is a quite a diverse region. So we're seeing um, more, more challenging times in Australia, in Singapore, in Korea, uh, and perhaps less so in Hong Kong and China, where they're being a little bit more resilient um, and perhaps they have that, uh, that global trade which can offset some of the domestic pressures they're seeing. Um, what we're also looking for when we do our analysis is the, the what-if scenario. So companies and, and markets that have backup plans have alternative uh, customers they can sell to, um, 
and are really are well positioned to, to manage what will be choppy waters going forward. So what would you say are the biggest challenges in the credit market today? And which countries actually are looking more hopeful as we come out of this pandemic situation? Well, I'm a glass half, uh, half full kind of guy, so I, there are challenges, but I also see it as an opportunity. Um, within Allianz Trade, what we're providing is a partnership for our customers which gives them the opportunity. We give them uh, our, the benefits of our global knowledge and our global footprint. So we can give them best advice in terms of which customers to grow with and which customers to, to take new orders from. Um, so we definitely see it as an opportunity. The, the markets, as we said, have been quite uh, benign for the last couple of years. So there's a real sweet spot at the moment to, um, uh, to, to lock in early with insurance products where the prices are relatively flat still because we haven't seen those insolvencies come to the market. Um, and you can lock in now ahead of uh, six to 12 months time where we do expect those insolvencies to come. Um, so the commercial terms are very attractive. The, the risk appetite is strong. Um, but what we've been seeing specifically for the Asian markets, electronics is obviously a key sector and will always be so. But we're seeing chemicals and we're seeing machinery and equipment really, really um, drive uh, in terms of the numbers of people buying, uh, buying the product. So it's a very good time to come and talk to us um, and we can share that, that knowledge that we have. Well, let's hope we can be more optimistic going forward. In the meantime, Matthew Wells, thank you so much for joining us today from Singapore. Thank you very much indeed. And yeah, we, hope, um, we hope things go very well for us in the future. Definitely.